Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a resource that will help you get a 5 on your AP exam and an A in the class. Sounds lovely. <laughs> Three letters for you. C. E. D. These stand for Course and Exam Description, which is a document that the College Board develops and releases for each course and exam in the AP program, all 40 of them. It's designed for teachers and students to know what is on the AP exam and the skills that they need to have for that exam. There's also a ton of other important stuff that the College Board provides within this document, so we're going to dive into it now. So everything up until the page that says Course Framework is pretty much useless to you, and honestly, I have no idea what is on any of these pages and what they mean because they're really not relevant at all. You scroll far enough and you'll start to see the skills section. It may be called science section or reasoning process, but it looks something like this. And on the screen I have AP Human. This is AP Computer Science A, AP World History, and AP Biology. This page is important, a little confusing, but vital because it tells you the various skills that you need to be able to have to pass the AP exam. For example, on AP Bio here, it says that you have to do certain math problems like means, ratios, rates, and percentages. This means that you need to be able to do means, ratios, rates, and percentages for your class and for the exam. So it shouldn't be a shocker if it shows up there. On any of the histories, these are the skills that you'll be working with for each unit. Comparison, causation, and continuity and change over time. And each unit is actually organized with one of these skills in mind as the focus. And we'll get into the unit system in just a second. The next section is the course content. And this gives a brief, very brief, breakdown of the units and their weight on the exam. Because they're not all weighted the same. Some are weighted more than others on the multiple choice and on the free response. And these will show up multiple times across this document. Here on AP Biology, it gives descriptions of each of the four big ideas. Here on AP World, it organizes the units in chronological periods as well and provides the main themes for the course to create connections within and across units. Each of these big ideas will be focused on more than others in various units, and here's a chart to tell you what units those will be. The next is the course at a glance, which is important because it provides a breakdown of the units into topics and it shows how much weight each unit is on the exam and how long you should really be spending on them in class. It also tells you if there's any personal progress checks available in AP Classroom for them. These are tests that your teachers can assign and may have multiple choice and free response questions similar to those on the AP exam. They're really good practice and I strongly recommend doing them when available or asking your teacher to open them if they don't do so. Each subtopic actually focuses on a certain skill or skills or theme which is important to consider when learning that lesson. For example, in AP Biology, 1.5 is the structure and foundation of biological molecules and this is orange and this means that our Argumentation is an important skill to have when discussing the content in that lesson. Now, this is where the fun stuff's about to show up. All that other stuff was not that fun. This is the fun stuff. Now, you can actually skip ahead a little bit of that little instructional manual that College Board gives us, because I'll be covering all that. For those taking AP Histories, this is an important page here, because it tells you that while the course, yes, is a history class, you still need to have considerable geographical knowledge, and they also have two maps to show you the main continents of the world and the regions of the world. These are the maps to go by when a question in your class or on the exam targets a specific region. So in this case, yes, Egypt is part of the Middle East. Just had to clarify that for any confusion. You're welcome. Now we're going to get into the nitty gritty, which I won't spend too much time on, but essentially the next chunk of the CED tells you what you should be learning in each unit and each lesson. It lists any required skills and learning objectives. For World Here, we're given some illustrative examples of concepts for the time period and the lesson. So there's filial piety in East Asia and Chipper Rice for 1.1. The AP Computer Science A exam provides resources to practice the programming skills necessary for each lesson. Here we can see that AP Biology provides a considerable number of essential knowledge, as well as illustrative examples, to give a better breakdown of what students need to be focusing on to avoid sounding vague. Each and every single unit and lesson has a page or two like this, and they're incredibly important and helpful when studying for your test and for the AP exam. If something is not on any of these pages or in this document anywhere, it's not a part of the curriculum for that course and will not be tested on the AP exam. If you're worried about something being covered in class, bring this up with your teacher and tell them that since it's on the CED, will you be required to know it for that class? Some will say yes, and some will unfortunately say no. Fun fact about AP Daily on AP Classroom, each of these videos are organized by units and subtopics that are in their course's CED, so they're going to be covering not only the essential knowledge for each subtopic, but also the skills and developments necessary that are listed. They may even use some of the illustrative examples that I brought up earlier. Don't brush those off either. It's very, very common for those to show up on an exam and in your class. For your math and science courses, equations that are on your reference sheet will be shown here on the document as well. You don't need to memorize them, but they are important to know how to use. Like I said earlier, something's not in this document 
assignment, it's not a part of the AP course or exam. No exceptions. Okay, so once you get all past the units, you're going to stumble across these instructional approaches. And this is a big part for teachers who are teaching the class, but it doesn't serve you any good as a student. So you can read it if you want to, but you can just skip it over like I do. Now stop when you get to exam information, because that's way, way more important to you than a teacher, because they're not the ones taking the brutal exam in May. This section starts by reiterating skills and the units and their weight on the exam. It also goes over the standard structure for the exam, how long the section will be and their weight and the types of questions you'll see, how many questions you'll see, and the time that you'll have to answer those questions. For courses like biology, where the FRQs are all different, the College Board provides names for each FRQ. For example, FRQ 6 is called Analyze Data, so I wonder what you'll be doing on that FRQ. FRQ. It also says it's worth only 4 points, which contrasts to questions 1 and 2 because they're worth 8 to 10 points, meaning they're weighted more as a whole on the FRQ section in your exam. I like how the College Board provides us with a breakdown of how much importance each of these skills are. We can see here for AP Human that concepts and processes are tested more on the exam, and for AP Computer Science A, code testing and documentation are each tested the least at around 12 to 18 percent. The documents also give a breakdown of what the FRQs will look like on the exam. Here for AP Biology, they're very specific as to what each part will ask you. You don't know yet the exact concept or process, you won't know until the exam, but you'll be able to know what they can ask you regarding various biological concepts and processes. Here for AP World, it actually tells you that you won't see a DBQ on Units 1 and 2. It also provides the necessary skills to earn all the points on the DBQ. There's also a bunch of other information on what you'll see in the MCQ, SAQ, and LEQ. For example, they tell you that you get three choices for the LEQ, and each choice may be from a different time period. For example, LEQ Choice 1 will be from 1200 to 1750 somewhere in between there. And choice two will be between 1450 and 1900. For AP Computer Science A, you're told different programming skills that you need to do for each FRQ. For example, FRQ 4 requires you to create, transverse, and manipulate elements in 2D array objects. And this means that you will see an FRQ, the last one, requiring you to have extensive knowledge on 2D arrays. And this is actually the FRQ that students struggle with the most, <laughs> FYI. The next page is the task verbs, which is just the type of questions you'll see on the FRQ. For AP Human, your FRQs will only ask you to compare, define, describe, explain, and identify. Each of these requires a different approach to correctly answering the question. For AP Biology, there are different task verbs, like calculation, which asks you to label your units and use proper significant figures, and that's something important to note when you do your mathematics on the exam. Next, you'll see sample exam problems, which usually consists of around 15 different multiple choice questions from across each and every unit that we've gone through. These problems are very similar to those on the AP exam and to provide you with a good feel of the types of questions you'll be faced with. There's also sample free response questions. However, most of the time you will not see every single type of FRQ that you'll see on the exam in the CED. For example, the AP Human Geography exam has three FRQs, but the CED only has two. The answer keys, question types, skills, learning objectives, and units are available for both the MCQs and FRQs in the CED. For your STEM classes, if you continue scrolling, you'll find reference sheets, which are given on the AP exam. Here we have a lot of formulas. If you're taking AP Chem, you'll also have the periodic table. And that's it. We finished our CED tour. Give yourself a pat on the back. I strongly recommend you familiarize yourselves with the CED for each of your AP classes because it'll make the process and studying a lot simpler, in my opinion. Now, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really does help me out. And yeah, comment down below something. I'll read it, you know. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.